I don't want to use too many cliches uh, at this point, Jonathan, but everything's like a Rorschach for people. One man's uh, meat, another man's poison. Uh, one man's hell is another man's uh, heaven, I guess. What, what do we have right now, in your view, at Twitter, Jonathan? Is it somewhere between heaven and hell? Like, I don't know, what would that be, like a purgatory or something? What do we have right now? Well, look, I don't know about your the theological way you want to interpret this, Joe. But I will tell you, like, you know, despite my reservations that we've talked about on the show, I was cautiously optimistic that Elon Musk would be able to address Twitter's deep and abiding problems, and that he'd take the concerns of civil society to heart. But some of the developments over the past few weeks, I think they've been alarming at best, including, you know, last night, one of the first things he did was he fired the head of trust and safety at the platform, the person responsible for making sure that you deal with conspiracies and misinformation. And we know that he welcomed Kanye West back after a two-year absence after he made anti-Semitic comments on Instagram. And we know that he posted this meme of former President Trump and Ye and himself all owning you know, platforms as if they were playthings. So I'm gonna tell you right now, like I was glad to see the tweet you just put up about the fact that he thinks Twitter can't become a free for all hellscape, which by the way is a pretty low bar. But given his recent behavior, I think we all need to see action, not words. We need to know, we need to know that Elon remembers that conspiracies kill people. Yesterday was the fourth anniversary of the Tree of Life shooting, a man who was radicalized online. We've seen it in Buffalo, El Paso, Poway, Charleston. So we need to know as civil society that Elon Musk is going to take the steps necessary to ensure that the platform is free from conspiracy theories right. and aid. Right.